comes from the book of 1 Corinthians in chapter 1. Starting in verse 18 and as I thought about it a little more, I'm going to go into chapter 2, about five verses. That's not going to be on the screen, but that's okay. Starting at 1 Corinthians 1, 18. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world. Things that are not to reduce to nothing things that are so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that it is as written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you with lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the Spirit and of power so that your faith faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks. I know this this passage, you know, there's parts in there that we have heard before. I, I, I love this passage. But, you know, it, it comes in the book of 1 Corinthians. And, you know, 1 Corinthians, you know, we, we see in there that may, this might not necessarily really be the first letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthians. That there seems to have been some kind of ongoing, dis, you know, discourse, ongoing letters back and forth between him and the church there in Corinth. And, you know, Corinth was a, a city that was actually very prosperous. You know, it, it was in a place where it was kind of, uh, you know, an important port, you know, for a lot of people there. There's a kind of a connection between the east and the west. And it, had, it was a city that had actually been founded a long time before this, but then it had been destroyed. And in about 150 years or so before Jesus, it had been rebuilt by Rome. And, you know, and it was lar- had been largely made up originally of, of slaves, former slaves, now freedmen. And, 
but it had grown to be very prosperous. There, it, there were a lot of temples in Corinth and some very large temples to the, you know, to the Roman gods. You know, and there was a lot of, you know, it, this was a kind of a center of, a, you know, kind of the uh, Athenian culture, the Roman culture, the you know, you know, really Roman city. You know, and, and a lot of the, the city was very segregated. But see, there was a lot of things. If, if you wanted to do business, if you wanted to do anything, you, you kind of had to align yourself with certain groups. And a lot of it was, you know, different, you know, the, di- you know doing things in the names of different gods. If you, even if you went to a business dinner, you might be in, in a group with a certain businessman of the town, but they're going to do things in the name of a certain god. I mean, that's kind of how things were in Corinth. And, and Paul, you know, he went there as a missionary and he lived there for about a year and a half. He, he, he worked among them. He worked in a, like kind of in a leather you know, shop there with some other missionaries and, and helped start the church there. And he, he came in to preach to them. And it, as he is, in a lot of places, they started with house churches. You know, and there were some prominent women who helped you know, support the, you know, the house churches there. And, but it was a very mixed group of people. See, you know, in, in their culture, they were all kind of separated out by the socioeconomic status, by religion, by different things, male, female, Jew, Greek. They were all separated. But as they came to know Christ, you know, this became a very diverse group of people. You know, and, and, you know, of course, you had some of those who helped support the church who were, you know, might have been of noble birth or had more money. But then a lot of people who came to the churches were, you know, those who were kind of outcast of society, those who were, you know, the poor, those who, you know, in other contexts might not have had much power, much to speak of. And as they came together, they kind of brought all that together. And, and so, of course, they're going to have some tensions when you get all that together. You know, there are these, all these different groups of people trying to learn how to live together. And, you know, that's where some of the problems, some of the tensions in the church arise. So much of 1 Corinthians that we see is all about unity. You know, coming together and, you know, being unified in the body of Christ. You know, and... And one of, so he, he comes on into them and he's talking about here in the first chapter after you know, the, the, the greetings and he talks about some of the divisions and things going on in the church and, and, and some of them who, you know, maybe this group was baptized by this apostle or this group was baptized by this apostle. Some claiming Paul, some claiming others and, and they all think that maybe they're better than the rest of them. Now that doesn't happen in church today, does it? No. <laughs> you know, someone... You know, some churches think we're better better because of this, or this we're better because of this, or you know, that's the group he's writing to. And he comes and he starts talking about how you, the he says the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. He really starts. He, he kind of gets. I mean, starts with some strong words, and he talks about how the the wisdom of God seems like foolishness to this world, and he wants to make sure that we understand that even you know God, you know, doesn't look on the things that we look at, and the people who are strong or powerful in this world are not in the eyes of God. Yeah, so that's where he starts. And he says, you know, one of the things he starts out, he says, where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? And those are kind of some titles that you kind of see in Jewish circles, that, but these are the learned people. These are the people who might have some, some power, some influence, and, you know, and they got some, you know, school learning. You know, so they think that they're better than others. And he, so he kind of starts out saying, where are they at? He said, has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? He said, you know, through the greatest wisdom of this world, we can still not get to God. 
through the, through the greatness of this world, we still cannot get to God. You know, he, he's, he makes that very plain. He said, you know, the, the Jews look for signs, the Greeks look for wisdom. You know, we, you know Jesus' ministry, he said all the way through, the signs that he did weren't good enough for them. But they wanted sure signs that he was the Messiah. Signs of power and authority. And the ones he did wasn't good enough for them. But the Jew, or the Greeks, they want wisdom. They follow after the philosophers. Plato and Aristotle and the like. And, you know, they try to think if, you know, if they can learn, you know, and follow after wisdom, somehow they can make them better. You know, they... All these people are looking for what can make them better in this world. And he said, but when you go up against God, all of that is nothing. Right? He said, even the foolishness of God, if there is such a thing, is greater than the greatest wisdom of this world. Even the weakness of God if there is such a thing, is greater than the greatest power of this world. No matter what, who you are in this world, it doesn't matter compared to God. Right? That's what he's getting down to. He wants to make sure that we understand. And he says the, 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 you know, the, Cross of Christ is foolishness in, this, in the eyes of this world. But that is exactly what God chose to bring salvation to this world. You know, and there are things that we talk about, you know, things that are common for us in our faith that for other people outside the faith, those who are not inclined to hear, they sound like foolishness, Right? I mean, we talk about Jesus, our Lord, our God, crucified on a cross. Now, for somebody who has, did not grow up in the church, somebody who has absolutely no idea, they hear something like that. They're like, what? How did your, your God die on a cross? But we know that it's because he gave himself up out of love for us. I mean, there are those things that sound so foolish if you kind of think about things in the way this world thinks about things. But for those who are called, and we, we, kind of, we might get kind of hung up on that word called, but it really means those who are invited, those who have heard the gospel preached. And those who have heard the call of the Holy Spirit you know, and those of us who have accepted it, we know it's, it shows the power of God. And then he, said, he, he goes on and he says, now consider your own call, consider your own invitation, brothers and sisters. You know, he knows who's he, who he's talking to. He said, you know, not many of you were wise by the world standards. Not many of you, you might not have much, you know, you know, pr- School learning. You know, you might not, you know, might not have been a noble birth. You might not have power in this world. He said, but God has chosen to use what is foolish in the world to bring shame to the wise. God has chosen to use what is weak in the world to shame the strong. To use what is low and despised in this world. Things that are not, and, and there he, he using kind of a phrase that the Jews often used of Gentiles. They, the thing, people are things that were not. They, they just looked so lowly in them. So he, using things that are not to reduce to nothing the things that are. So those who are nothing in this world are the ones, very ones that God chooses to use for His purposes. Think about that. I mean, how often through history have we seen 
you know, ones that were the most unlikely to be of any use in the kingdom of God are the very ones that God chose to use. I mean, we can see it in Scripture all the way back from the very beginning. You know. I mean, even back, you know, Cain and Abel. You know, if you go to, back to them, you know, we might look, kind of look more favorably on Cain. He was the one who was probably stronger, the more able, the more fit. And Abel, the one who was more humble, meek. But whose sacrifice did he accept? You know, you could look at Moses. Moses was a murderer on the run for his life. <coughs> and yet God called him out of the burning bush and said, you're going to go back and bring my people out of slavery. And what did Moses do? Uh, 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 I, I can't talk, Lord, I, I, I stutter, I, I, I can't do that. And what God say, I'm sending you anyway. And then he was able to go before Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Uh, throughout history, I mean, Paul himself, one of the greatest persecutors of the church, became one of the greatest missionaries the church has ever known. But why? Because it was not about them. It was not about them. It was about God. Right? Because it was not anything, it, it, it was not how great they were. It was not how holy they were, how righteous they were. It had nothing to do with them. It had everything to do with the power of God. To use them for his glory. That's it. I mean, Paul even said when he came among them preaching, and Paul was a learned man, but he didn't use eloquent words, he didn't come among them trying to convince them through wisdom, through the you know, things of this world of who God was and through what he had done through Christ. What did he do? He came among them. He said, I preached Christ crucified. And that's it. He said, I let the power of God do the rest. So that your faith, he said, so it's not dependent on some wisdom or anything of this world that can pass away, but it is wholly based on the power of God. You know, and that, that's where he, he goes into the first part of chapter 2. You know, he said, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You know, one of the things that I had to learn years ago, for me personally as a preacher, you know, there, there's a lot of great preachers in this world. There are, and there are. You know, I, you know, I've gone went through seminary. I heard, you know, heard so many great sermons from, you know, even, you know, my colleagues there in seminary, fellow students. But and, and you know, we read so many sermons and things in seminary. So many that can that could speak with such eloquent words, and who could really, you know, they. they crafted every single word and had everything, you know, that was perfect. That's not me. I'm a country boy from Davidson County. That's it. There is nothing special about me. But one of the things that, you know, me and my, my buddy Nate and that has preached here, you know, we, in one of our conversations early on, I think we were still in seminary, and you know, you know, those kind of conversations where you just kind of, you know, solve the world's problems or whatever, you know. But one of the things we we, we talked about in a pearl of wisdom from him, God called me to preach. 
He didn't call me to preach like Billy Graham. He didn't call me to preach like anybody else. He called me. And that stuck with me. It, 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 you know, nobody special. Country boy from Davidson County. Everything special about me is because of him. And so I've had to learn 30 years that it's not about me, it's about him. And, that, and there are times I'm still learning that. There are times that's still, God's still working on me for that. But I know when I'm able to do something, that anything that's good, it's him. If I'm able to reach anybody, it's him. It's not me. You know, one of, the things, one of the things that I have heard from so many people in the churches throughout the years is that people get afraid of doing stuff in the church or get afraid of going out and, and, and telling people about Jesus. And we come up with all kinds of excuses just like Moses. You know, well, I don't know the Bible well enough. Or I, I may, you know, I, you know, I don't really have the prayer life that I need to really do what I need to do. Or, you know, I don't have the finances. I don't have this or that or whatever it is. We come up with all kinds of excuses. You know, one of the things that I learned even, you know, we, we you know, we, like I said, finances, we use that as an excuse for a lot of things. You know, my, when I was called to go to Guatemala as a missionary, I, had, I was just out of college. I had no money. But what I figured out was when I, if I told people what God was calling me to do, that He would take care of it. Whatever it is God wants you to do, He's going to be the one to help you do it. Why? Because it's not about you. It's about Him. And it's about what He can do through you and me. It's all about Him. God uses the people of this world who might be of no account to this world for His purpose, by His power. He can use every one of us. And all He wants us to do is come before Him like a little child. To come before Him and say, Lord, I'm here. I don't have anything to offer you but myself. But if you can use me, use me. And He will. You know, and I asked them this morning, if you want to, try, if you want to do something, what do you do? Do you start thinking about, you know, well, reasons why I can't do it, or do you just do it? Right? That's kids for you. But as we grow older, we lose that. You know, Jesus tells us to come, wants us to come before Him like a little child because as we come before Him, if He tells us to do something... If we have the faith of a little child, we're not going to start coming up with excuses about why we can't do it. We're going to say, okay, Papa, I'm here. That's what he wants. I mean, God has used, some, and, and, and we can see throughout history, God has used them sometimes the people who had the shadiest past, some of the most despicable people, some of the poorest people, some of the lowest people on the totem pole for his glory. And he did it because it had nothing to do with him except them being willing. It had everything to do with him. It's all about him. That's it. You know, I come before you and preach. I can't. It doesn't help if I, if I try to use eloquent words and do this and that and say things that, you know, it wouldn't help. You might not even understand me. I come before you and say what I know, and and I'm all, and most of the time I'm preaching to myself too. You 
you know, we go out into this world. God will tell us what we need to say. God will show us the people we need to talk to. God will put a burden on your heart for the people in this community, in this world. Show you where He wants you to share His love, His gospel. Or are we quick to say, I can't do it? Or are we going to say, okay, Papa, here I am. You can do it because of Him. Because His power is stronger than anything of this world. Amen.